Hi, welcome. I'm Lorelai of Namasturm Yoga. Thanks for practicing at home with me. Today's practice is going to be a vigorous vinyasa flow. Let's get to the mat. So we're going to start sitting today, as we do in many of our practices. So Really, this is just your time to transition, to kind of prep for the class to come. Take your hands to your knees. Try to align your spine here so that your shoulders are over your hips. The neck is nice and long. If you have trouble here, and you know that's not unusual, it might be helpful to sit up on something. So it could be a block, it could be a book, it could be a folded up towel, or you know, you're in your home, right? We have tons of things around us, something that will not crush under the weight of you, but something that you could sit up on that would give you just a little lift that can help to lean us forward, help sometimes the knees to relax and keep the shoulders over the hips. So all that said, go ahead and just bring your hands to your knees, close the eyes. And then just let yourself settle in. Give yourself permission to slow down here. I find that even on days where I don't have a lot to do, I still sometimes exist in that mindset of rushing, of hurrying, of feeling like I'm running a little bit late. But this is sort of a place where we can, you know, slow down and just take the time that it takes to do the things that we need to do. For the next hour or so, nothing's going to get done but you on your mat. You're going to work through your body, but there is not like a goal to accomplish here. So just allow yourself to soak that up. Take that in. This is just practice. And then start to focus on your breath. See if you can allow awareness of your breath to let other thoughts move more to the background so that they're not distracting you. Dealing with distraction is something else we can practice here. So it might happen while you're sitting and are not doing anything else, or it might happen later in class when suddenly you're phone starts to ring and you're distracted and you have a choice as to whether you're going to let that distraction carry you from your practice or whether you're just going to let it go, notice you got distracted and then come back. And the choice is yours really. So it doesn't, you know, if you in your home choose to go and answer your phone, that's your option because you're on video. You can pause me. <laughs> We're going to just start to move really simply here at first. We're just going to take the arms out and up and just start to get a little bit of stretching happening. So interlace your fingers, press the palms up towards the ceiling. Lengthen the torso. And then we're going to take a little side stretch. So we're just going to let the right hand come to the floor, but keep the left arm up and just let yourself lean over. The right hand can come to the ground. Um, as you go deeper, or if you want to go deeper, you can slide your fingers further away, or you could bend your elbow, but try to keep your left hip down. And then just breathe here. See what's going on. Once we start to move our spine, we suddenly find all the points that we feel tension in our spine. Let yourself notice. Don't try to push through it or negate it. Let's take our left hand now down, and we're just going to kind of spiral here. See if you can get your hand to the floor. If it doesn't quite come to the floor, you can put it on your right knee. Allow yourself to bend down into this, which is still a little bit of a twist. Breathe into your back and then walk the hands in and come back up. And now we're going to take the hands behind the back and interlace your fingers. So you've kind of got your hands clasped together behind you. 
pull your shoulder blades together and down your back, and then lift your hands up off of your waist. Keep the heart forward. Breathe, stretching across the shoulders, and then take your left fingers to the floor and take the right arm up. And again, just a nice, simple, easy side stretch here. And you know, simple and easy is one thing, but that may not mean that it is completely without sensation. So you'll notice if there's anything in your spine that is feeling tense or tight, you might get at that right here. Just let yourself breathe, notice. And then we're gonna twist it down. So taking your right hand now to the floor off of the left, off to the left side. And if the hand can't quite come to the floor, you can put it on your knee. And fold, twist, breathe. And then walk the hands in and come on up. And let's go ahead and uncross the legs. And we're just gonna come to a forward fold here. So have your feet about hip distance, soften up your knees and just let yourself dangle. Loosen up the back of the neck. Maybe you can turn the head from side to side. You can sway the torso. Again, if there's any places that you feel there's tension, try to release. So the knees are really soft here. We're not stretching the hamstrings per se, but we're trying to allow the upper body, just like a waterfall from the tailbone all the way to the head, to just drape down. And then keep the knees bent. We're gonna roll on up. Take this first roll up really slow, so it might take a couple of breaths, but really concentrate on stacking your spine one vertebra at a time. So just almost as if somebody's fingers were crawling up your spine and putting each vertebra in place. Then the shoulders come up and the head will come up last of all. Take a moment to roll those shoulders back and down. And we're just gonna flow a little bit here. So we're gonna start to incorporate our ujjayi breath and on an inhale, reach the arms out and up. As you exhale, lead with the heart and fold over the legs. Bend the knees, inhale to roll up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, roll up like a wave. Exhale, folding down and find the pace of breath that works for you. So it may be different than mine. And you know, we usually don't start our breathing with this particular movement. Usually we'll start it in stillness or we'll start on hands and knees in cat cow. So you might find that the breath here is, you know, longer than maybe you'll ultimately want it to be. And that's okay. So we'll calibrate through the practice, but try to start with something that feels like the right pace of breath for you. And then of course, listen to it. So if you're working the ujjayi, the back of the throat is narrowed and you're creating that little rushing sound. Go ahead and let yourself stay in your next forward fold. Um, and if you're not at the front end of a mat, you can go ahead and walk there. So use whatever side of your mat you like, whatever works for your situation. And we're gonna step the right foot back and take that foot to the back of the mat. With a moment, for a moment with the knee off the ground, just reach through your back heel and stretch out your back leg as you lunge into the front knee. And then we're gonna take the right knee down to the floor. Let's um, step the left toes a little to the side. So we're just gonna create a little space here and we're gonna lower down. So maybe the hands are gonna stay here on the floor, but maybe you start to bend the elbows Maybe you could even put a block or a blanket or a folded up blanket or, a, a, you know, whatever you got under your arms. But some of you might actually be able to get the forearms to the ground. Now note, the left knee should still be stacked above your ankle so it's not rocked to the side. Let your head hang down and just give in here a little bit for this really passive but maybe kind of deep stretch. Breathe. Now, come back to your hands. Let's step the left knee back to meet the right and, you know, basically end up in a tabletop. So you might need to adjust the hand position a little bit. We're just going to do a couple cat-cow stretches. Inhale, head and tail lift, chest and belly drop. Exhale, 
arch the spine towards the ceiling. Just a couple times. Again, noticing what's going on there in the spine. Work the shoulders as well, so the shoulder blades pull together in cow pose as the back sways, and then they draw apart in cat pose as the upper back rises between them. And then let's go ahead and tuck toes, lift knees and hips, and shift to downward facing dog. Down dog number one, so take a little time working out the legs, warming things up here for yourself. Hmm. And then let's look to the front of the mat, step, walk, or if you're up for it, you can hop forward. Let's take feet together, big toes touch, heels slightly apart, take a flat back. So give yourself a good strong art at Uttanasana, reach your head away from your tail. Exhale, fold down deep. And now instead of rolling up, we're going to reverse swan dive. So come on up nice and strong. Exhale, palms together in front of the heart. And then following the breath, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. And now we're going to step the left foot back. So we're coming to the second side lunge. So take it all the way to the back of the mat. And for a moment with the fingers on the floor, just stretch out that back leg. Maybe reach the head forward away, away from the heel. The right knee is right above the ankle, so your shin is really vertical here. And then lower the left knee down. Extend your back toes. Walk the right foot just a little to the side, but really still trying to keep the knee over the ankle here and start to bring yourself down inside of that leg. So your right shoulder is really inside of the knee. Let the hands come to the floor or go deeper. Maybe forearms come to the floor. The head can drop down, hang here. And you might find one forearm makes it to the floor and the other one isn't quite there and that's okay too. Give yourself some breaths. Allow this to deepen. So even if the forearms aren't on the ground in breath number one, by breath number five, maybe it's really easy to get them there. Okay, and then come back to your hands. We're gonna step the right knee back to meet the left. But this time, let's lower the chest down between the hands. So coming all the way down to the floor. And then inhale, maybe just a baby cobra for this first one, but if you're feeling ready, you can press your hands down and come a little higher. Probably don't make this the biggest cobra you've ever done because it's early yet, right? We wanna keep things a little soft and easy but move your shoulders back and heart forward and keep your shoulders, like the heads of your shoulders, down away from the ears. Soft glutes and legs. And then tuck toes, lift knees and hips and from here come to down dog and take a little time to pedal through the legs. Bending one knee, let the opposite leg straighten or you can really just deepen the pose more simply. Inhale, lengthen from hands to hips, scroll long in the spine. Exhale, deep and reach the chest back or maybe straighten the legs or drop the heels. Really work the hands, so that's the root of the pose. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, step, walk or hop forward. Inhale, take a nice flat back. Exhale, fold down deep. Inhale, reverse your swan dive, come up. Exhale, palms together in front of the heart. We're ready for some sun A's. The only pose we haven't really done yet is plank. So our first plank, we'll just hold for a few breaths and then we'll, we'll move through it. So find your breath here. Steady your gaze, maybe tone up the legs. On an inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, long forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back, half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Now as you step to plank, Think about keeping the spine long. So bend the knees as much as you need to to get the palms to the floor, but then step the feet back and keep nice and long through the spine, through the neck. Pull the navel up towards the spine so that you feel like you're supporting yourself from the core. Reach through the heels. Breathing, of course. And then as you lower, you can take knees down first or maybe it's time for chaturanga. If you're going with chaturanga, Lean forward a little bit so your heels come over your toes, 
Bend the elbows, keep the elbows over the wrist as the shoulders come forward, and then you can either lower all the way down and come to cobra, or if you want to sweep to up dog, you can do that as well. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths to hold here. And as we continue through our sun A's, we're going to go shorter in down dog as well, so that we're really staying with the rhythm of the breath. But always take the sun A's and the whole practice at your own pace. So, you know, you're in your own home. You have so many freedoms. I'm not watching you. No one is watching you. So you can feel free to try things, you know, mix it up a little bit. Do what feels good to you. You know, I'm here to provide alignment to help keep you safe and give you suggestions for going deeper. But you're gonna have, you can, uh, you know, make it your own. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or hop the feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, take a half lift. Exhale, fold down deep, and then reverse swan dive. Come on up, and let's really just keep following the breath here. We're gonna do several more cycles. Palms together. Inhale, reach to the arms. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step to plank, lowering chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, or you can stick with cobra. Exhale, downward dog, and then just one inhale in your down dog. Exhale to step or lightly hop it forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, folding deep. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, palms together. And again, inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha. Exhale, step in lower, or if you want, you can jump to Chaturanga. Inhale, Cobra or Up Dog. Exhale, Down Dog. One inhale. Exhale, step or hop forward. And lift. And fold. And come on up. And I'm going to set you free for the next couple of rounds, so just follow the pace of your breath and keep flowing. This is a full body warm up. Everything is working together. Every part of you is engaged. Try to keep the rhythm of the breath, the rhythm of the body consistent to the best of your ability here. Maybe take yourself through one more sequence. We're going to meet in our next downward facing dog. So when you get there, just let yourself hold. Take your time, of course, moving at your own pace. When you do arrive in down dog, let yourself just stay and breathe. If you need to bring your knees to the floor for child's pose for a short time, please do that. That's always a good backup plan if you don't want to hold in down dog, or if down dog just doesn't feel as restful as we might wish it to be. If you are holding in down dog, keep it alive. So keep the breath flowing. Encourage just subtle deepening of the pose. Checking in with your alignment. Finding that balance, doing enough but not too much, 
And then let's go ahead and take the right leg into the air. Try to keep the hip nice and square so the toes are gonna stay flexed down. You can think about rotating the front of the thigh inward. Sometimes that idea of muscle wrapping can really help. So although the heel's lifting up, we're not opening, we're not lifting the right hip. And then look forward between the hands, step the right foot all the way forward. Let's come on up for a high lunge here. So we're gonna take a crescent pose. Front knee is over ankle, reach up. If you can, think about pulling your navel in and dropping your tailbone down a little. And this is a subtle movement, but really see if you can get that torso upright that way. Lunge into the front knee, straighten through the back leg, and then the arms can come up alongside the ears. The elbows are, you know, they're straight, but they're not like locked. So we wanna keep a little bit of softness and ease. We want that in the shoulders as well. Same thing, fingers, there's energy through them, but they're not stiff. Now we're gonna take the left hand to the floor inside the right foot. Try to line up your fingers and toes, take the right arm up, nice easy twist here. But we're gonna in a moment take this to side plank. So thinking about stabilizing the upper body, getting those shoulders stacked. Now try to keep the right hand exactly where it is. Roll to the outer edge of the right foot and then move the left foot back. Now, if you wanna modify, you can take that knee right out from the ankle, or I'm sorry, the knee is over the ankle, the knee is right out from the hip. Otherwise, stack the feet, lift, maybe look up, and breathe. And we can come out of this into vinyasa. So turn to the floor, you're in plank, lower chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. And second side. So that left leg's going to lift, hip stays nice and square. Um, you know, and maybe the leg is only as high as your hip, the heel. But if you can get it to a diagonal, great. But just don't lift the left hip to do that. We're trying to keep the hips leveled out here best you can. Look forward, step the left foot up. And coming up for crescent pose first. So we're just going to find the balance here. So if you can, again, navel in, tail down, straighten the back leg as you lunge deeper. So all of this little, sort of that little minutia, it, it's, it feels like minutia, like little subtle movements, but it actually can really help to deepen and strengthen your pose. And you know, we get stability from some of those little internal adjustments. And then we're just gonna do the same thing but the other way. So the right hand's gonna come to the ground inside the left foot and really try not to bring it ahead of the foot but right in line so that your left knee stays over the ankle. Take your left arm up, twist open. And then attempting to really secure the alignment of your arms and shoulders so that that doesn't have to move as we transition to side plank. Roll to the outer edge of the back foot and then as smoothly as you can Step the left foot into place and then flex the feet. Lift the hips up away from the floor. Maybe turn your head and look up and breathe. And then turn to the floor and you can take a vinyasa here. Cobra or up dog and exhale, downward facing dog and breathe. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or hop to the front of the mat. Feet together. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold down. We're going to bend the knees and sink the hips, coming to chair. Let's take it to a twist here. Um, so we're going to take the left arm outside of the right leg, push the top palm down into the bottom one. Try to keep your knees together so that the hips stay level. Or really, it's keeping your hips level so the knees stay together. But those two things tend to be connected. And then we're gonna step the left foot back. So take it back. So we're back in our high lunge, but now instead of an easy twist, it's a little bit more challenging twist. If you can, fly the arms open. Keep reaching through that back heel. Breathe. And then float up, 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 and back, 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 reaching all the way back if you can. See if you can grab the outer uh, left thigh with your right hand and then top arm goes up and over. Look to your back heel as you keep lunging. Now, we're going to go ahead and uh, take ourselves back to side plank. Left hand down, but just briefly, 
Top arm up, roll into it, inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, come on up, and exhale, downward facing dog. Breathing here. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, step or hop the feet forward between the hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Now bend the knees, sink the hips, come to chair, and we're gonna twist the other way. So I'm just gonna step to the other end of my mat, so I'm still facing you. Right arm outside of the left leg, push your top palm into the bottom. Keep the hips level. If you're not sure, you can put your hand there. But you can tell better if your knees are still side by side. And then standing on your left foot, see if you can step your right foot all the way to the back of the mat. And maybe it takes multiple steps. Maybe you end up having to use your hands. It's okay. If that happens, it's okay. Fly the arms open. Keep the twist. Keep extending. And then float up, 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 up. Reaching, so right fingers are forward, left fingers are back, but let's see if we can take the left fingers all the way to the outer thigh, and then we can kind of pull to draw ourselves deeper, keep lunging forward. Maybe look to your back heel. And then we're just gonna kind of go through side plank. So we're gonna take the right hand down on an exhale, and inhale, open to side plank. Exhale, turn to the floor and take chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog, and exhale, downward facing dog, and breathe here. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, step or hop feet forward between the hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold down deep. Bend the knees, sink the hips. Inhale, come through chair. We're gonna go right back into vinyasa. So exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha. And exhale, Chaturanga. And we're just gonna to start to add on some of our basic standing poses just so we can start to get those into a sequence here. From downward facing dog, let's take the right leg into the air, just inhale it up, exhale, step it forward, and we're gonna to come to warrior one. So pivot your back, heel down, front knee over ankle, come on up. If you want, you can use your hands and your hips to remind you to square those hips forward. Lunge deep, strong back leg, back heel or outer edge, the whole outer edge of the back foot presses down. Arms up, maybe palms together, lift the heart gaze up a little bit here. One more inhale. And then exhale, we're gonna to open to warrior two. So adjust that back foot so that now the back arch lines up with the front heel, shoulders over hips, front knee over ankle, and then turn and look over your front fingertips. Breathe. Now to cycle out of it, just turn that front palm up, Take one inhale, reverse warrior, just stretch it back, and then exhale right to chaturanga. So see if you can flow right to it, and maybe it's a one-legged one. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Second side, so inhale, take the left leg up. Exhale, step it forward, back heel goes down. Inhale, come on up, and we're just establishing our warrior one here. Lunge into the front knee, press into the outer edge of the back foot, hips squared, and then arms up. And then maybe take the palms together, look up towards the thumbs. And then exhale, open to warrior two. So you'll have to open up that back foot so you can open up the hip, but keep the front knee over the ankle, arms at shoulder height, and then just turn your, your head to look over the left fingers. Now turn the front palm up, just one breath, inhale, reverse warrior, keep your whole lunge, and then exhale, hands to the floor, right to chaturanga, and maybe that left leg doesn't even come down until it sweeps into up dog. Exhale, down dog, and breathe. Inhale, look to the front of the mat, Exhale, step or hop, feet forward between the hands. 
Inhale, take a half lift. Exhale, fold down deep. Now, bend the knees, sink the hips. Inhale, come through chair. And we're gonna exhale, go back to a forward fold and we're gonna take Padangustasana here. So we're gonna basically just grab the big toes. So first two fingers around the big toes of each foot, yes. Wrap, hold, we wanna get some grip here. And then inhale, lengthen the head away as if you were going into like an Ardha Uttanasana flat back. And then to deepen, keep your spine long, but bend the elbows. You can pull yourself in. You can let the neck and head release here. Okay, ready for a little challenge? We're gonna keep hold of the left big toe. We're gonna take the right hand to the right hip. And we're gonna try to come up hanging on to that big toe. Now, maybe that knee bends for you as you come up, but maybe it can come up with the leg still straight. Woohoo! Take it over, open to the side. Try to keep the hips nice and level here. Now, I'm gonna have to turn on my mat, but we're gonna step to warrior, th we're gonna move to warrior three. So you're gonna let the leg come back forward, keep reaching energy through the heel, and then the leg, maybe arms here, maybe arms alongside the ears, the leg is going to move under your body and you're going to level out with the floor. Warrior three. So the tendency is for this left hip to kind of rise. So like we were doing in that down dog split where we're thinking about wrapping the muscle of the thigh, that left thigh, we're wrapping in and up so that we're really trying to level everything out, keep the hips nice and square. Breathe, now bend the front knee, step back very long. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, open to two. Inhale, reverse warrior. And then let's go ahead and take an extended side angle here. So forearm to the thigh, top arm reaches overhead alongside the ear and open, breathing here. If you want to go deeper, right hand, maybe floor block, but we don't want to like collapse, right? Because now we don't have a side anymore. We're like now extended back of the body, right? So we want to keep the extended side angle, keep some lift and engagement. Strong feet, inhale, reverse warrior, and then exhale, hands to the floor. Vinyasa, again, maybe that one-legged chaturanga feels nice. Just put the top of the foot on the floor for up dog. Exhale, down dog and breathe. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or lightly hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. We're coming again through chair, Utkatasana. And then folding again. And this time we don't need to grab both big toes. We know which one we're going for. So we're just gonna grab hold of that right big toe. Hang on, do the best you can. Take your left hand to your hip and see if you can just take that leg up with you. As you come up, extending out, shoulders back. If you can get that right shoulder to move back, do the best you can. And then just let your leg open to the side. <sighs> Try to keep your hips as level as possible. Breathing. Sometimes we'll do this, we'll take the other arm out and look towards that hand. So if you like that, you can go for it. We're gonna bring the back leg in though. And now again, we're going to warrior three. So either palms together or arms alongside the ear, the leg is gonna start to move under the body. And once it hits the heel and starts to move back, then the upper body has to counterbalance by moving forward. So find the length here. Try to rotate your right thigh to face the floor so the hips stay level. Pull the navel in. This is still some core work here to keep the spine nice and long. Now bend the front knee. Step it all the way back. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, open warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. And then we've got another extended side angle because we got two sides. Lunge in and maybe look up under the arm toward the fingertips. 
Now, if you did on the first side, you can think about going deeper. I actually do like to work this with like a block or a book because your hand can come behind you, but it doesn't have to go all the way to the floor to just get a little bit deeper. And it's kind of a good stage. If the fingertips, so me, I've got my fingertips just barely on the floor. I'm not resting down. And I probably would like a have, to have a block, but it wasn't handy, so I'm gonna go with it. But you wanna still think about keeping that extended side, that nice diagonal, so you're lunging really deep into the front knee and you're not collapsing the torso. Now inhale, you need to be able to come up and back if you had to really straighten that front knee. Maybe it was a little too deep. Exhale, hands to the floor, vinyasa. Inhale, cobra or up dog, and exhale. Downward facing dog and breathe. Resting here for a few breaths or child's pose, knees to the floor, hips to the heels. Really give yourself a true rest if you need it. We're gonna do a little bit of dancing warrior since we've done all of the poses. Now we can just let ourselves flow. So when you're ready, inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, bend the knees and step or lightly hop the feet forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold down deep, bend the knees, sink the hips. Inhale, come to chair. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Vinyasa, so Chaturanga. Up dog or cobra, you can skip the Vinyasa, of course, if you just wanna go straight to down dog. Inhale, take the right leg up. Exhale, step it to the front of the mat, back heel down. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, high to low plank, following your breath. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, the left leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, high to low plank. Inhale, up dog or cobra. And exhale, down dog and hold. Breathing. Child's pose if you need it. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, step or hop the feet forward between the hands. Inhale, take a half lift. Exhale, fold down deep, and then coming through chair, bend the knees, sink the hips, Utkatasana, and then straighten the legs, come to standing. Okay, let's step nice and wide on the mat. So parallel the feet. Let's take a good prostrate Padottanasana here. So wide-legged forward, fold hands to the hips, lift the quads. We're just gonna take the first basic variation where we fold. Once we get about halfway, the hands come to the floor and the fingers and toes point the same way. As the elbows bend, they can just stack right over the wrists. Lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in. Lift your quads, lean in, lean in, lean in. Now, if you are one per, uh, someone for whom the head comes to the floor, I'm gonna demonstrate how to go into a headstand, although you probably shouldn't be watching me if you're actually going into a headstand because your head is on the floor. But nevertheless, lean forward. And then your elbows should be over your wrist and the head ahead of the feet, or the hands, sorry, so that you're in a tripod with the head and hands. And then lean, 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 heels come up lightly first. And then we should just be able to float the feet up. Some people will kind of take a like, um, you know, like little training wheel practice. You can bend your knees and bring them to your triceps and that's okay too, to practice it. Up, and then when you're ready to come out, Reach through the toes. Try to come down slowly. Now you need to counterbalance a little. So the hips have to move back a little bit so that the feet don't go far back behind you. And then carefully come on up. Let's float up. And we're gonna turn the right toes forward. We're gonna do a little bit more balance practice here. And you may or may not wanna have your block handy because we're gonna go into half moon. Um, but we're gonna just start by going into warrior two. So bend into your front knee, front heel and back arch line up. And let's reverse. 
Now, we're gonna just basically float into half moon. So the right fingers are gonna come forward, off of the mat perhaps, or to your block. Left hand can be at your hip, and then just float the back leg up. Reach through the heel, find the balance. Take the top arm up if you can. Okay, so I think we've done this transition before where we came to half moon from uh, dancing Shiva pose, which is that twist where we hold the foot at the front of the back. Can we come out, go the other way around? So let's see what happens if we start to lift the right fingers, float up, and keep your twist Keep your twist, keep your twist. Let the left leg start to come under the body and then move up. Reach for your left foot with your right hand. Push into that foot and extend. How'd that go? I got there. I don't know if it was beautiful, but I did. But here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do another little kind of nutty little standing balance pose, which is called uh, Super Soldier. I don't know if it's anything in yoga because I'm not sure if it's a real yoga pose. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start to think about taking a forward fold here. So we're gonna let the foot come down, but we're gonna keep holding on to it so that that foot starts to come down by our standing leg. Now the left arm is gonna be actually a bracing arm. So we're gonna take that hand to the floor, perhaps in front of the mat. This left foot is actually gonna go behind us, but we're gonna keep holding it. We might need to change our grip as we bend our knee. Let the top of the foot stay in your hand. Your right shoulder is gonna come under your right leg. Point the knee to the ceiling, drop your head to the floor. This is not a perfect version of the pose, but just see where you end up. See how it works. We can play. We're gonna come out of this in like the easiest way possible. So we're just gonna let go of the foot, plant the palms, step to plank and take a good old vinyasa. Whew. Inhale, come on up, cobra or up dog, exhale, down dog and breathe. All right, okay, got through that one side. We, we've only got two, but we get to try it again. That's the good thing, we get to see how successful we can be on the second side now that we kind of have, maybe can wrap our brains around what's going on. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, step or hop the feet forward. Inhale, take a half lift. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, come through chair. And then straighten the legs, come to standing. Okay, let's do another prostrate in between sides. So widen your feet, take the hands behind the back, interlace fingers, shoulder blades back and down, and then lead with the heart and come to a nice forward fold here. Let those arms reach up and over to stretch into the shoulders. Lean forward toward the balls of the feet. There's not really a headstand to go into here. I suppose if you finally got your finger, your hands to the floor, you could try it, but I think I'm a long way from there. <laughs> Press the feet down, come on up, float up, and let's do the other side. So, you know, I get it. Sometimes these, this is a little complicated, and you may get to a point where you're like, I'm out, and that's fine. Just come to child's pose, come to down dog, take a little breather. We will move on, but let's just give it a try. So, sort of just with a sense of like curiosity, let's see what happens. Let's turn the left toes open now. We're just starting with warrior two. So we can all do that, right? So we're in good shape here so far. Reverse warrior, stretch back. And then we're just gonna go for some half moon. I'm actually gonna move it back a little on my mat because I've got like a candle up there. I don't wanna catch my hair on fire. <laughs> Be bad. All right, so let's move to half moon. So just kind of floating into it. Find your way. Maybe that top arm is still on your hip, your hip. that's fine. Maybe it comes up. Breathe. Spend a little time here. So right half moon. Oh, I love this pose. It's fantastic. You can really extend in all directions and you feel like you're flying a little bit. Okay, now we're going to think about going to that dancing Shiva pose. So basically what's going to happen is our fingers are going to come off the ground and that foot that is lifted behind us is going to start to move under the body toward the front. So floating up, but we're going to try to keep ourselves kind of facing the direction we're facing. Do the best you can. 
float on up. And that left hand is going to stay forward because when we get that right foot forward, we're going to try to grab for it. Have your gaze where you need that gaze to be and then turn yourself a little bit open. Press into the foot with the, into the hand with the foot. Open, open, open. Okay. Now we go for the super soldier. So the idea is that we're going to keep the foot in the hand the whole time here as we start to bend forward. So we're going to re-square ourselves towards the front of the mat. So we don't need to be open to the side anymore, but we're going to start to let this foot come down. And this right hand is at this point kind of free, but once it can come to the floor, it's going to come out at kind of a diagonal. Now this is sort of this awkward moment where we're like, well, my arm just ran into my leg. Yeah. It did, but we want to start to let the foot pull back and the arm is actually going to get pulled under the leg. Now, bend your knee so that your heel is right by your hip. So it actually is a fully bent knee at this point. And then you're going to just start to let yourself drop down. So really try to get your shoulder kind of behind your knee here so you've got space. And then pointing the knee to the sky, your hand may have to move a little on your foot. So, and if you fall, Look, you fall, it's not the end of the world. You can come back into it by bending the knee, grabbing the foot, pointing the knee to the ceiling, dropping your head towards the floor. Breathe. Hey. <laughs> Straightening it up better if you can. And then we're gonna come out of it as easily as we can. We're gonna step, let go, step the right foot back, plant the palms, and vinyasa. And downward facing dog. And breathe. Okay, knees to the floor. Um, so we're going to go into some inversion practice here. Um, so I encourage you to take a headstand if you feel comfortable and confident. Um, but what I'm going to talk through is dolphin. So we're just going to work a little dolphin with the idea of a prep for a forearm balance. Um, forearm balance, usually I would do at a wall with a block. So if you want to work with a block on the mat, that's fine. I think it's a little harder to work with on the mat because that block can move. Whereas if it was against a wall, you could push into it and it wouldn't slide away from you. So that's why in the center of the room, generally, we interlace the fingers and push the, push the forearms down because it's just going to be more stable for us. Now from here, tuck the toes. Lift your knees and hips. The downside of working with the arms like this in dolphin is that when we do come to the wall, usually this is the arm shape we're used to. So we don't want to let go of the clasped hands and move to that block. But such is life. Let's take the right leg up into the air and reach up. Now we're lifting up out of the shoulders so the head should be able to hang freely. Reach through the toes. And then take your right foot back down and then take the left arm up. Or left leg, sorry. Your arms are on the ground. Breathe. And then toes to the floor, knees to the floor, hips to the heels, ah, child's pose. I never think of child's pose as being my favorite pose, but there are moments where it certainly is. Okay. Okay, so now we can just add on or not, right? So we can stay with basic dolphin, forearms to the floor, they press down, tuck toes, lift knees and hips. And then let's say we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take the right leg up, but maybe we wanna go a little further. So make sure your head is not on the floor. This is very important. No head touching floor, not because you're lifting your head with the neck, but because you're pushing down, creating space in the shoulders. Let the left knee bend, take some little hops. And you're trying to bring your right leg over your right hip. Don't flip yourself backwards, so don't do too much momentum. And you're not really trying to get the left leg up into the air at this point, because that's going to just throw you off your balance. Switch sides, take the left leg up, and then little hops up off the right toes. Challenge, keep your top leg straight. That bottom leg is bending, but it doesn't mean the top one has to. So try to keep the legs doing their own thing, not getting clues from the other. Take knees to the floor, hips to the heels. Now, if you were in a headstand, you could stack your fists in this child's pose and put your head and have it resting here. Just releases some pressure in the back of the neck. But if your head was not on the floor, which if you were working dolphin, it would not have been, just let your head come to the ground. It's okay if the, the neck lengthens here. If you want, flip the palms up, 
bend the elbows, put the hands on your shoulders. And then take the arms out and from down dog, root through the hands, lift the elbows off the ground, lift the hips off of the heels, but keep the spine as long as you can, tuck your toes, Lean your chest back and then just push down to lift up. All right, down dog. Okay, so we're gonna start to think about um, pigeon stretch here, but let's go ahead and take some variations to get into it. We're gonna take the right leg into the air, open the hip and bend the top knee, point the knee to the sky. Left heel is dropping to the left hip, and then this is optional, but maybe flipping the dog here. So pivoting on the left toes until the right foot comes to the floor, just off the mat. Pivot, 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 toes back, knees over ankles, lift the hips up, and reach up and behind you, opening the heart. This should feel like a back bend here. Now, we're gonna flip the other way, which means as we pick up the right foot, we're gonna think about shooting it under the left arm. Um, so pick up the back foot, plant your right hand, and then the right leg literally just kind of extends underneath the left hand. And then maybe take the left hand up and twist open the other way a little bit here. Breathe. and then left hand to the floor, and we're just gonna slide that right leg over until the right knee ends up behind the right wrist to set up for pigeon stretch. Use the left toes to walk the left leg back so you're on the top of the thigh, back foot extended completely, fold down over your shin. Um, and I know many people practice a variation of pigeon on their back. If you have any troubles with your right knee, you can go ahead and do that at this point in place of this version. Maybe forearms prop, prop you up at first. Maybe you start to walk yourself out. Maybe head comes down. Whatever feels comfortable for you here. But try not to rock all the way to your right hip, right? So we're still on top of the front of the left thigh. Now come on up carefully, support yourself with the right fingers, and let's just stretch the back leg a little bit. So bend the left knee behind you, reach back with the left hand for the foot, draw the heel towards the hip, let the knee move towards the back of the mat. Um, and if you want to go a little further, you can lean, make sure your shoulders are over your hips so you don't need the weight on your right hand. Maybe bring your foot to the crook of your elbow and come on up for a mermaid pose. And then let the hands go to the floor. Step back to down dog and shake out the right leg or kick through the heel. Just do what you need to to kind of release any tension that might have built up in there from being in that posture. And we'll do the other side. So we're gonna do the variations again. Um, so starting off with uh, left leg in the air, open the hip and bend the top knee. And these variations are optional. So if you're just like, you know, I just wanna go to pigeon, then that should be what you should do. Let's come on up though, if you wanna flip the dog, pivot on the right foot, step the left foot behind you, try to keep the hips high. Think of this as a back bend, push the heels down to get the hips up, open the heart, breathe, reach with the fingers overhead. And then, coming back through, try to keep your hips lifted as you do this, so don't just drop them to gravity. Pick up your right left foot, plant your left hand, and then slide that left leg under your right arm and take the right arm up to the ceiling. So my leg is like right up from the hip. You could have it even further towards the front of the mat, but you don't want to have it like way back. It's a little actually less stable, even though it seems like it might be easier. And then take your right hand down, move your left knee behind your left wrist, 
And again, if this is the point where you would prefer to come to your back and take the modification there, please feel free to do that. Use your right toes to help walk the right leg back. So we might start off here and we're like literally sitting on our foot. So we use the right toes to kind of get that leg to move back. So the shin is more right in front of us. Extend your toes behind you and then start to fold down and breathe. And again, we'll spend some time here. This pose is passive. Um, that doesn't mean nothing's happening. It just means that we are not exerting effort to create the stretch that's occurring. We're just letting gravity do all of that. So we're just giving in and we're walking the arms out of the way if we feel like they are holding us back. We're letting our head rest on the floor if possible because then we don't even have to work to keep our head up. And then come on up carefully. And once again, we'll stretch the back thighs. So support yourself with the left fingers. Bend your right knee. Reach back with the hand for the foot. Draw the heel in. If you can't grab your foot, then don't worry even about bending your knee, right? Just leave that leg out. Move your torso upright more and get a little bit of that stretch for the front of the body. If you've got the foot and you can go deeper, maybe that foot comes to your elbow. Maybe you don't need your left weight on your left hand. Maybe you can take yourself towards mermaid pose here. And release it, and hands to the floor, and down dog, and shake out the left leg or kick through the heel. Okay, so let's come forward to our bellies to take a little bow pose. And this is going to be our back bend for today. Knees to the floor, drop the chest between the hands. Um, you know, three major back bends we've got bow, we've got uh, wheel or bridge. And we've got camel. If you would rather take another one, that's okay. Although I do encourage, you know, variety. We want to not always be doing the same back bend because each one will teach us a little something different. Bend the knees, reach back with the hands for the feet. If you can grab your ankles, actually grab your ankles. But if it means you have to widen your knees to get them, then, then don't worry about it. Lift the, the heart, pull your shoulder blades together. And then once you've kind of got that going and maybe a little bit of pressing your pelvis into the floor, and then start to pull the heels away from the hips. If you've got your ankles, you can flex into the feet a little bit and it sometimes just creates a little more stability. Uh, you can keep your thighs on the floor or a little more vigorous, let your thighs rise and come up a little higher. Make sure you can breathe. We do want to be able to hold our back bends for more than just a split second. One more breath if you've got it. If you don't got it, come down sooner. Let yourself lower, forehead or an ear to the floor, and breathe. Okay, so back on number two, and I'm going to offer some little variations each time, but feel free to just stick with the basics if that's what you'd prefer. So bend the knees. If you want to, this time reach for the insides of the feet. Instead of the outer feet, just grab from the inside. It's going to pull the shoulder blades a little bit closer together. And then same action though. So we're lifting up, breathing. Five to seven breaths in your back bends so that you really feel like you give yourself a chance to get something out of it. It's not just up tense and then down, right? We want to try to relax and ease into this. Lower down when you're ready. Again, forehead or you can turn your ear to the floor. And then for the third one, we're going to do the same thing we did in the first one, but we're just going to add on a little bit here. So we're going to bend the knees, reach back for the feet, 
and then we're gonna pull on up. And then, if you want to, we're gonna rock to the right, keep the bow, right? So keep the bow. Your knees don't come together. That top leg doesn't drop to the bottom one. Head and feet are reaching towards each other. And then a little bit of momentum, come back up, full bow. Rock to the left. If you've got something you're gonna run into on your floor, maybe opt out of this variation. And then come back up. One more breath here. And let it all go. Again, forehead to the floor or an ear. And then keeping your shoulders kind of square to the floor, we're gonna bend the right knee, step the right foot back behind us to twist the low body. But try not to roll back, right? So we're trying to keep the shoulders square, just the hips are lifting and twisting. And come back through center, and we'll do the other side. We'll do a little more twisting when we come to a seat in a moment. Bend your left knee and step it in behind you. And it may not actually come to the floor behind you, but just the weight of that leg moving back is gonna twist your low body. And then come on back. Take your hands next to the chest. Press up into Cobra. Exhale into Downward Facing Dog and breathe. Let's actually do a small twist here in down dog. So walk the feet in just a little closer to the hands. The hands should still be taking the weight, but we just want to be able to move the feet closer so we can reach back for them. So the left hand is going to come over to the right outer leg. So you can grab around your calf maybe and then pull yourself under your arm, twisting. Push down with the right hand, maybe even push down with the right heel, and then switch sides. So left hand comes back to the floor. You're still in down dog, it's just a little narrower. Take the right hand to the right hand and pull yourself underneath your body. And then the hands forward and step the feet forward and let's come to a seat okay so we're gonna do a little bit of forward folding after some back bending that really is what is prescribed I guess you know but um, but we'd like to do some twists in between those two things um, so take the right leg out um, let's step the right foot or the left foot over and we'll just do one more twist here so wrapping your right elbow around your left knee or take your right elbow past your left knee and turn And then come back to center. And then either Janya Shoshasana, sole of the foot to the inner thigh, or if you feel like taking a half lotus here, take a moment to lift that leg. And you can even do this if you're prepping for just Janya Shoshasana. Kind of lift the leg and just move it around in the hip socket to kind of open things up a little bit. And then if you're coming to half lotus, I always think of like trying to direct my heel to my belly button so that it's really coming close into my body. The edge of the foot's gonna go right into the hip crease. So this isn't the thigh, right? It's not down by the knee. It really is tucked way up and then the knee drops down. Now, as I start to fold, the idea is I'm like enfolding the foot. <laughs> like it's gonna disappear as I fold and just the toes are gonna stick out the other side. Flex your right foot and fold down. And now if you're in Janya Shoshasana, the fold is the same, right? You're angling towards your right leg and you're folding, but the sole of the foot is to the inner thigh and the edge of the foot is on the floor. Breathe here. Finally, if you want to take a little bind, if you can reach the foot, you can reach the right fingers, grab the big toe, and then the left hand comes all the way around and can find that left big toe behind you. Fold. Come 
come on up carefully, carefully. And we'll just do the other side. So take your left leg out. Take the right foot across and we'll start with just this nice twist. So keep your left foot flexed, kind of get that leg activated right from the get go and then wrap your left arm around your right knee or take it past and just a brief twist. We've already done some twisting, but really just to let that torso un like kind of get wrung out a little bit. All right, and then come back to center and we're gonna prep kind of the same way here. So we're taking hold of the foot and we're just gonna kind of move the leg around and we're actually trying to move the leg around in the hip socket so we can kind of warm things up in there. Um, because if we do the full lotus, it is actually a hip opener as well. Take down Shushasana if you want, edge of the foot to the floor, right? But if you're coming through that half lotus, er, aim your heel for your navel. Really try to get the edge of the foot to slide into that hip crease. So there's a natural bend there, right? Where your torso is up and your leg is out. And we're trying to get the edge of the foot right in that corner. And then from here, flex your right leg, let your right knee drop, or flex your left leg, let the right knee drop down. Now for me, I feel this differently on the second side than the first. So I'm like, well, maybe I can't go as deep and that's fine. So if you feel like it's a bad idea to do the same thing on the second side as you did on the first, you can opt out or just, you know, ease up. Or maybe this side is easier for you and you all of a sudden are like, oh, I can go deeper. Oh, maybe I can take that little bind. So if you did the bind on the first side, you can grab the big toe with the left hand on the second side, and then the right hand would maybe come around and find the big toe on the other side. I have a harder time on this side. Breathe, give in though here. The main focus, right, is to stretch the hamstring on the left leg. So that's the main thing that we're doing. And then come on up slow, especially if that stretch felt deep for you. Make sure you're not just bolting yourself out of it. Give yourself time to transition. And then take both legs out and give them a little shake. And then let's just cross the legs. So I'm going to let you go off on your own for Shavasana. I do encourage actually taking the five to 10 minutes on your back, completely relaxed. Close your eyes, no effort, allowing yourself to just give up the weight of your body to really complete your practice and you will have earned it, so enjoy. But for now, let's close together, bring your palms together in front of the heart, close the eyes. Tune into your breath. The light in me recognizes and honors the light in you wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining me at home to practice. Namaste. Awesome. Do feel free to share my classes with anyone else you think might enjoy them. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, you can always type those in to the comment section as well. I'd be happy to read Thank you again.